pleasure. First of all, thank you all. Thank you very much for the organizers, for to all of you for, for your interest in, in our country and the developments that take place in our part of the world. And uh, I know that the interest in our region is very high. Therefore, I would like to show you and give you the perspective that we have in this regard. Very briefly to touch uh, upon uh, what we do. It's a, it's a a uh, separate institution, uh, Office of the State Minister uh, on Europe and Euro Atlantic integration, which means that we are dealing with the coordination of the Georgia's Europe and, and Euro Atlantic agenda. Uh, we are also dealing with one of the probably the most fresh and uh, the most important direction, which is the uh, strategic communication. Uh, and I think we will have to touch upon that issue. And we are also dealing with a very complicated uh, issue, which is the uh, donor coordination issue. And uh, that's also in our portfolio. We are a small office, but, but we have a quite large agenda, especially uh, since the last year we have signed the association agreement, which is a, a very important document, which uh, consists of decades uh, years long uh, experience of the European states and we are now in a process of approximating our legislation with the European IP with uh, we are in the process of uh, uh, new reports new regulations uh, the association agreement for, uh, from last September to Monday that was part of our follow the agenda that we have association agenda uh, the important thing is that uh, uh, this is a very demanding process because we are introducing a new regulations coming from the our past, which was uh, one of the uh, least regulated and liberal economies. Now we need to approximate with the new regulation, which is uh, quite sensitive for Georgian business. It's not say painful. Therefore, we need to, together with the reforms to uh, strategically communicate with our population the uh, medium and long-term benefits of the process. Therefore, we are uh, in a close cooperation with the uh, civil society. Our uh, staff is very, and our resources are very limited. We are only 38 uh, working on these issues. Therefore, for us, it's important that half of the work is done by the NGOs, by the business associations and trade unions. They are part of our everyday work. When it comes to the uh, planning of the uh, every next year's uh, action plan, but also in the process of monitoring of its uh, implementation, when they see the shortcomings of this process. So we together, uh, we all, uh, and this is our foreign policy priority, move towards uh, forward towards our progress in European integration. European and Euro Atlantic integration is the foreign policy priority of Georgia, which is supported by the vast majority of the population and all the political parties uh, represented in the parliament. Uh, so this is a, uh, this is of huge importance and the, the determination of the government is very high to follow the agenda. Uh, and the reforms that we uh, that we have are also very important for our society, although we do not consider the association agreement as our end goal. We think it's important to use the moment and transform our uh, legislation, modernize our economy to politically associate ourselves with the Europe and the economy to integrate with it because the association agreement comes with a very important part of it, which is the comprehensive free trade area, which Georgia has signed, which has already shown its uh, concrete results with the 21% increase of Georgia's export in the first uh, three months of this year. And uh, when we look at the developments in the region, we all understand that we have, uh, due to the uh, developments, we have a uh, decrease of our exports with 51% in CIS countries in general, mostly with the Ukraine and Russia. Uh, so uh, this is our agenda on uh, European uh, direction, but it is also very important to underline that uh, the strategic communication is and more important because we see the strengthening of the Russian uh, propaganda in Georgia and in the region generally. Uh, you know, 
just presenting, you know, Chanel or, or the uh, portraying that, you know, this uh, integration process is against Georgia's tradition, against Georgia's culture, and that this new regulation leads us nowhere and the process of Georgia's integration is unattainable. Therefore, it is important on the one hand to, to uh, clearly demonstrate and in a positive and not, uh, let's say, uh, not in the same manner, uh, not propagating, uh, but in a positive way to present the benefits of this process, but on the other hand, to bring the uh, tangible results to our population. Uh, on EU front, it is going to be the visual liberalization that will uh, we will end the, the uh, implementation of action plan by the end of this year, and we will have it uh, working from the starting from the uh, first half of the next year. Uh, and uh, also, one uh, very important issue in our agenda is the Euro-Atlantic integration of Georgia. Georgia, throughout the years, has been one of the big contributors to the international uh, operations of NATO. We have been the, uh, just to name the recent, uh, the biggest non-NATO uh, members, non-NATO state uh, contributing to the ISAF mission. Now we are the second largest of the United States in the resolute support mission in Afghanistan. Uh, we have uh, declared since 1999 that we uh, want to become the NATO member state. And uh, since 2008, uh, at the summit, it was underlined that Georgia will become State. We have the annual national <coughs> program, which is very ambitious for this year, for example, as it, uh, it uh, has the very important reforms that we have, and I think I will have some time to also uh, concentrate on that. Uh, we have NATO Georgia Council, uh, and uh, last year at the World Summit in Newport, we have been offered a new substantial package to increase our defense capabilities, our interoperability with the NATO. And uh, which we are we are uh, implementing in a in a timely and uh, efficient manner, and uh, we will launch the joint uh, NATO Georgia joint uh, training and evaluation center in Tbilisi this August. Uh, Secretary General Stoltenberg will visit Georgia for on that occasion. Uh, but what we see is the great need as uh, NATO has become one very important. Uh, a part of our uh, internal political discourse starting from 2008. Everyone is uh, in a uh, position that there is very difficult to explain why uh, the membership action plan has become uh, such a uh, difficult to, to, to get. So uh, it's exactly one year left until the Warsaw Summit, which will take place 7 of July next year. So we are starting to, to consolidate the efforts of our friends and allies uh, to, to address this issue at the Warsaw Summit. We all understand it is not going to be uh, easy. We all understand that from this perspective, uh, even our close friends are, are uh, telling us, uh, Please do not raise the expectations. We know what that means. And uh, but what we uh, try to do is uh, uh, not to take no for an answer. Not because we want yes for an answer, but because it's very early to say. So we want to use one year. We want to use this time to coordinate and consolidate our efforts, and uh, not think uh, what the excuse is why not to. Do it, but to try with friends and find solutions how to progress Georgia on this road. Uh, was saying that the, the uh, somehow uh, as West wasn't uh, ready to respond to the uh, wasn't ready to respond to the Georgia's agenda in 2008. Uh, we have that feeling. In, 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 uh, and understanding that that was what led us to this uh, war. Uh, and uh, after war, also uh, insufficient response to, the, uh, to Russia after war. Uh, we have a strong feeling this was uh, led us uh, 
in the development that is taking place in Ukraine right now. Uh, and we have a strong feeling that it is uh, not about Ukraine, it's not about uh, one territory or another one. It is about the values which we consider ourselves uh, very much, say, what we want to build our society upon, that's the values that we want to see our country uh, progressing towards, and that's the values which uh, Russia, tries to, Russia tries to prevent from spreading as uh, it contains the threat to its uh, overall authoritarian ruling. And so that is a uh, and in this uh, world, what we see, and we all understand the threats that come with the progress. And uh, you know, the, although it was in 2000, after 2000, development and after the military intervention in Georgia, it was uh, explained that with that step and explained to, uh, by the Russian leadership that with that step they have managed to stop. Uh, or enlarging, but also we see now in the Ukraine that it is not about the NATO, that uh, the progress towards the European Union can also be contained for the Russian Federation. And uh, what we see now, I want to uh, concentrate on the strategic communication. This is important that uh, we see a very strong increase of the Russian NGOs, Russian media in Georgia, especially in the region of Lake linguistic minorities which consume a lot of Russian media and uh, we have increased our presence in the region I mean our presence of the office we are now present in every 10 uh, of the regions we are starting a campaign to address this issue in Georgia uh, as uh, but as I said without the tangible results the next year's parliamentary election will be dominated uh, the discourse about the uh, unattainability of Georgian government to, to, to progress in the state. And that uh, means that our uh, parliament might not be so, so uh, overwhelmingly supportive to approach it to a Euro Atlantic integration. Now, well, uh, there's a lot to, to uh, describe the development in Georgia in the sense of the reform, in the sense of the economy. So if there's going to be an interest, I'll be happy to do so. Otherwise, thank you once again all for the interest. So nowadays, for us, the uh, key issues are Georgia's uh, European agenda, Georgia's integration to the to NATO and the prospects of it, and the challenges that we have in the region. And that's what I try to concentrate on. How was the time? time is? I was uh, yeah, no, certainly, certainly, yes, we'd be, happy, we'd be happy to, be to hear more. I would prefer just to be in the uh, question and answer. All right, okay, so if you, any of you have questions uh, for the minister, please feel free to ask them. Mike? Uh, yes, uh, first of all, thank you very much for, for sharing your time and, and for sharing your, your insight. Um, I noticed you were over the weekend uh, quoted in a Washington Post article, uh, which was touching on um, Russia's uh, presence in Georgia. And I just, I wanted to get your, I don't know if you had uh, the occasion to read the article, but I, mean, I wanted I to did, get your- I didn't like the the, uh, the, the title of that. Yeah. It was very far from the substance. Yeah, but. so that was sort of my question. If you thought that the article overstated, uh, the thrust of the article, as you know, was basically that that Georgia is feeling uh, somewhat shunned by the West, and there, there's this there's this according to the article there's this widespread sentiment among Georgians uh, and political elites in Georgia that um, prospects for either EU or NATO membership are diminishing, and that that Russia is capitalizing on the sentiment and making inroads in Georgia. And I, I, I wonder if you could elaborate on that, and, and, and if you think that argument was overstated. Yes, uh, of course, I think that first of all, the, the uh, title was definitely an overstatement, and uh, in the article you, you could uh, see nothing close to that with, with any, uh, any, any of the uh, quotes that were there. And I can be 
bit which which uh, was there from my side that uh, nowadays with uh, you know that the, the fact that Giorgio should have been disappointed by the outcome of the Riga Eastern Partnership Summit that was the uh, idea behind the question on which I have had the response and I truly believe that we do not have any time or, or luxury for disappointment we are in a geopolitical situation where we need to be consistent, stubborn, and continue with our reforms and wait for the uh, suitable political moment. But meanwhile, not to just uh, deal with the no map outcome, possibly in Warsaw Summit, but to work hard together with our friends. And uh, that's why we are not taking no uh, one year before Warsaw Summit uh, for an answer. Uh, but generally, yes, that is the threat. What we feel, the latest uh, polls show, uh, not huge uh, in huge parts, uh, diminishing the support towards European Union and NATO, which is still very high, uh, from 70 to 80, depending on NATO or EU. But the thing is, when uh, when you look uh, deep into it, and I have uh, analyzed it together with the uh, chief of the NDI and IRI in, in Tbilisi, and uh, what we see is the huge gap of those who uh, have not decided and who have not made up their minds. The undecided were very big number. And when we see at the political parties, and when we see uh, that the highest support is through the coalition, then comes, for example, UNM, Free Democrats, all those three are uh, pro. Uh, Western countries, but uh, Western uh, pro European and pro Western parties, but then there is a 45 to 50 percent gap of the undecided, and that's what scares me. That's why uh, we want to, to uh, not just scare someone, but to share our, our, uh, our cautiousness in that regard. Because it's uh, in Georgia, what we are trying to do is to. Uh, Nowadays, to be very frank, nowadays the, the situation is a little bit changed. Since the introduction of the new reforms, since the association agreement has become our integral part of our internal policy and we have a lot of reforms under that, uh, people are starting to ask questions. And it's not that on an emotional level everyone is supporting Georgia's European integration and, and uh, when we are around the table and, and Testing, okay, that's very something good to bring for. But uh, now people are asking questions. We are explaining, so we are uh, building uh, the, the uh, sustainable support to this. But there still is some emotional factor that might be changed, if not overnight, but but uh, over some period of time. That's what we are afraid that it still needs a lot of efforts together with the reform agenda that we have and uh, against the background of the Russian propaganda which is increasing and we have tens of NGOs that are uh, you know sending these uh, wrong messages around in the regions and uh, what we are trying to do now working together with the EU to have a, a Russian speaking media outlet in Georgia uh, there was an idea in the European Endowment for Democracy to have it for the Eastern Partnership, but we wanted to have our own because we have uh, our own specifics. We have Azeri and Armenian uh, uh, minorities. Definitely, we have occupied regions. Uh, therefore, there are some uh, important uh, messages that we want to, to distribute and spread and give this opportunity. We have uh, now the attention to the strategic communication is on the rise in Europe. They all feel it not only on the Eastern Partnership, but also in the EU or NATO member states, uh, which uh, is very difficult to oppose if we calculate how much money Russia spends on that. So, uh, therefore, we uh, have a feeling that together with Ukrainian models and together with the European Union, we should consolidate our efforts to address that issue and not to let happen uh, what can whatever can take place and whatever the uh, idea behind the title and possibly not the article in the Washington Post. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
uh, Christian Kennedy, I'm a member of the NATO Council here. Uh, I had an opportunity to visit Georgia uh, just a little less than a year ago, in a beautiful country. Um, so thank you for uh, giving us some of your time. Um, uh, two questions if I can get to in. One is, um, is there any prospect for uh, leveraging the uh, various um, geopolitical relationships that Georgia must find of with a, a greater degree of, of trans uh, on the face of it, it would seem that that would be a tall order. He has very pro-Russian relations. Uh, it's difficulties vis-a-vis -vis Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan's um, relationship, uh, strong relationship with Turkey and so forth. But could it be that uh, Georgia, given its good relations with both, could perhaps be a linchpin and that that trans relationship could help um, really leverage George Tbilisi's uh, foreign policy with respect both to Russia and, and NATO and the West? And secondly, uh, if you could also talk a bit about, you made reference to um, uh, what you call Russian propaganda. I'd be curious to know, one thing I noticed, and, and again, as an outsider, it might have been a completely incorrect observation, but the, the role of, uh, has, has in any way, has the role of church been used in, in any way by Russia as one of those institutions that um, that Russia has been able to say, well, hey, look, this is actually, this is a part of the Eastern tradition, this, this Georgian church. It's not, it's not a particularly Western institution, and therefore that's, uh, that, that's a, one example of, of a way of uh, bringing um, the Georgian population on site. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, about the Georgia's role in the region, I fully agree this is very important and that's what we are trying to do on uh, when we look, for example, at the uh, cooperation and very high level cooperation that we have, but, but uh, with uh, Azerbaijan, Turkey, Georgia, this is a trilateral cooperation. We have uh, annual meeting at the presidential, prime ministerial, ministerial levels. Uh, this is a, probably one of the key roads to, to ensure Europe's energy diversity, to ensure that Europe can have alternative uh, source of the resource, energy resources uh, or from coming from Caspian. Uh, the Southern Corridor has really a huge importance and that is very well understood. We are negotiating into the becoming the member of the European Energy Union, and uh, this is the partnership that uh, can only be described as a strategic. And we all are serving this this very important purpose. Nowadays, there are three acting uh, pipelines going through Georgia, and uh, during the worst possible scenario, in 2008, we have managed to maintain the. Uh, security of the pipelines, etc. When it comes to the uh, balancing somehow the relations, uh, you know, the new government since it came to power in the autumn 2012 has uh, concentrated on de escalating relations with the Russian Federation with the appointment of a special representative for the relations with the Russian Federation without having the diplomatic relations try to concentrate on the economy, culture, etc. And they are meeting on, on quarterly basis, uh, talking about the possibilities where the society could cooperate. But it hasn't brought anything uh, specific for in a political sense. Just the opposite, Moscow last year has signed, uh, has signed the so-called Treaty on Alliance and uh, Strategic Partnership with Sokovia. The Abkhazian region, and uh, this uh, March, March 18, uh, very cynically coincided with the one year celebration of the Crimea annexation. They have signed the Treaty on Alliance and integration with the South Ossetia and the uh, Triman region. So, uh, these are the steps that we consider as a step towards annexation because it uh, includes the, the possibilities of the common foreign and the internal. Policy 
policy of the integrating the local institutions into the Russian federal one. Uh, at such a level that our citizens in Abkhazia uh, were very much opposing to this uh, idea. Russia had to uh, entreat different so-called uh, presidential elections. Russia couldn't manage to have this candidate, and finally, this is this KGB guy has become the so-called president of Abkhazia and have managed to sign this this treaty. Because the feeling, especially now, when looking at what happened to Crimea, is that the so-called recognition of independence that Russia did with uh, two Georgia's occupied regions in 2008 was nothing but a step towards annexation, which uh, Russia is trying now to to, uh, to do. So now we have the uh, clear feeling that uh, with this and with the feeling of insecurity on the ground, uh, we have an opportunity and we are trying to engage as much as possible with our citizens in the occupied region and uh, uh, they are ready to, to, you know, direct for the direct communication. We are working on the infrastructural projects. Uh, we have uh, started, uh, well, the new government uh, since uh, 2013 has uh, started the uh, uh, universal uh, healthcare, uh, have initial universal healthcare system, free of charge for every citizen of Georgia. We are sharing this with our citizens from the occupied region. They are crossing the occupation line, they are getting their treatment free of charge. Even the de facto uh, leaders of the uh, in the de facto government, uh, we have free educational facilities next to the occupation line. We are working on the infrastructure projects inside and. Uh, adjacent to the occupation line, but but that's what uh, Russia anyway tried and uh, tries to do. But when it comes to Armenia, uh, you know, in 2006 Russia has banned any single uh, product entering from the Russian market from Georgia. It was devastating because uh, more than 50 percent of Georgian export was going to Russia. And even though in those years we have opened uh, the checkpoints with Russia to let Armenian goods go, because Armenia and landlord became, you know, uh, not so friendly geopolitically nations, and we have managed to, to open the corridor for the Armenian product while we were not able to, to trade with the Russian Federation. So yes, we have exceptionally good relations with all our neighbors. Of Russia, uh, and uh, it somehow helps uh, Georgia to, to uh, become a center and a natural hub of the region, but also being on the ancient uh, Silk Road, we, uh, the, our Prime Minister has launched the idea of Silk Road Forum, which will launch this, um, this uh, autumn. And uh, this is the fastest and the cheapest route uh, from China to Europe and back. So this is something we are trying to pass and the importance of the infrastructural energy and other, other um, uh, let's say, transportation is very important and this regard will play our role in the future, hopefully. Uh, when it comes to the church, uh, you are absolutely right. This is what Russia is using. Uh, and, uh, you know, in that regard, we, we I mean, now in, in, in an office, we have addressed this issue in a different way. Uh, our, well, first of all, it should be underlined that the Orthodox Church has a uh, significant, very important and exceptional role in the history of Georgia. It has always had, and uh, this is important, and it is underlined in a special communicate with which state has signed with the Orthodox Church. Uh, and therefore, today, the support and, and uh, support to the church is very high. It is probably one of the highest uh, and uh, highest supported institution uh, in Georgia. Uh, but the important thing is that the Patriarch, the, the leader of the Orthodox Church, has not on a single occasion underlined the 
partners of Georgia, Europe, and Lebanon. Therefore, as soon as it was appointed, uh, I had a meeting in the Patriarch's office, and we have agreed that we should promote this idea into the uh, in the church among the clergymen who has absolutely different uh, attitude towards uh, Georgia's European perspective because of the propaganda that is coming and Russians know where, where they are addressing. These are the multiplicators of the information. So if you have uh, a clergyman uh, with the same narrative as Russia had, it can affect thousands of the people who, who listen to, to uh, them on, on every Sunday. So. We have started, we have had the three meetings in the different hepatitis in the different regions explaining the values, explaining that uh, this tradition, this culture uh, is Europe is the only place which it can save with the reminders of the communist past when, when all the churches were destroyed by the Russian uh, army, etc. etc. So uh, we are working on that. We are working to, to uh, say make them also understand and our aim is is to get to those people who then uh, help us spread this information with the uh, just to take uh, an example uh, georgian government last year has launched the anti-discrimination legislation which was very difficult due to the condition of the uh, church but we are the responsible government in the regard that it wasn't popular, but that's what we do. That's why the government are there to do their popular steps. And now what we want to do is to keep up the communication with the church, uh, not to have some, uh, let's say, misinterpretations of uh, this process. And uh, in that church really has a huge role, and it's, it's uh, something we want to use for, for our cause. Thank you. Is the Orthodox Church basically the state church? Or the no, it is not. It is not. We have uh, around 10% uh, Georgian Muslims. Uh, we have uh, Armenians. We have Azeris, uh, ethnic minorities in Georgia. Uh, it's not, but it has an important role for the history of Georgia, which is recognized by the Constitutional Memorandum. State and, and the church. Mm -hmm. and it's not like in Greece that no. it's not state. Just... Sure. Um, uh, two questions actually, since uh, one arising out of Julie's. Uh, the Georgian Orthodox Church is fully independent of the Russian Orthodox, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, and you also mentioned 10% Muslim. I realize this isn't uh, in your sphere of uh, activity, but can you talk a little bit about how the um, activities of extremist Islam are affecting you, if they are at all? Uh, you've got major issues, I know, on the, in the North Caucasus. Yes, we do. That's and chain of mountains is somehow there is a natural border between northern Caucasus and southern Caucasus. But on our side, we have in the Pankisi Gorge, uh, very big, uh, no, not very big, not as big as Armenia or others, or even Greeks, but a significant amount of Chechens, uh, Georgian Chechens, say, so, well, ethnic Chechens, but uh, for, for ages living on the territory of Georgia, we call them Kists. And, uh, uh, but also after the developments in, in uh, Chechnya, we have received a significant number of, uh, of refugees from the Chechen Republic who are also residing there. After the, the, uh, the activities in, in Syria or Iraq, in uh, ISIS, uh, the, uh, we have started to try to uh, monitor the situation on the ground. I think it, that the number of uh, the Georgian Muslims who have left is not uh, big, uh, not significant, or is not different from any other 
European countries uh, within the, the number of uh, 60 to 70. Uh, but the thing is that there were some of them who used to work, who, who used to participate in the Chechen war. And therefore, they have very high positions in the ISIS. Uh, but we, what we have done is that we have uh, in, we have had the amendments in our legislation criminalizing activities or participation in the foreign uh, military service, uh, uh, illegal service because a lot of Georgians are fighting for, for the Ukraine. So, but illegal activity, etc., etc. But very recent was that we have managed to have five. Uh, Person who were working on our uh, youngsters uh, in that region to, to bring them to, to ISIS. So it is a problem for us, but, but we have a, uh, say, we are trying to control. Yes, the Soviet time, I advise you. There is yes. also, yeah, there is also, it, it has twofold activities from the government side. One is from the Ministry of Internal Affairs monitoring and doing the reinforcement. The other is raising living standards and engaging grassroots uh, in providing the better life so that to counteract the, the recruitment processes and inform the society what uh, obligations they are taking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have any idea whether. Uh, a significant number of Georgian Muslims are trying to join ISIS. Uh, well, that's the for, for nowadays it's not that significant or different from the uh, any other country. It's, it's uh, minor, but but uh, that's what Sophie said. We have managed to get uh, four or five. Uh, Criminals who are trying to recruit uh, our youngsters. Uh, Minister, I'm very interested in your engagement with the uh, Georgian Orthodox Church. Uh, were you the first minister to ever kind of go to them, or is this a usual? No, no, it's, it's uh, not. We are just uh, trying to somehow institutionally cooperate because uh, everyone in the government, in the political party, we, they have very good relations. But, uh, as the position was very clear by the patriarch, and somehow uh, avoiding this issue to talk, it's, it's not what, what uh, we decided. And, and therefore, we have addressed them, and they were so open, so supportive. They were so uh, not supportive, and very, they were, I mean, they were explaining, you know, here in the church as well, there are different positions, different ideas, and we do not want anyone to that we are against the European integration process, so please go explain. And we are listening to what whatever worries they have on right. any kind of a real dialogue have. to have a dialogue to be uh, to have them included in this process. And uh, we hope that it will bring uh, the positive result. And I am sure it is. What's interesting is our Senate uh, just recommended that uh, imams in Canada should be licensed. Um, which that means creating an established Islamic church in Canada. <laughs> exactly. Will we give them bishops? And uh, but I don't think there was much consultation in this either. So it's just interesting. You know, the dialogue is pretty important uh, yes, to both ways. It's not the only way to deal with each other. It's just you know, building the, the idea of the stereotypes. But you're not you're not going to like these uh, Georgian Orthodox priests, uh, I guess. No, <laughs> I don't think so. No. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. My name is Alice Kirkland. I'm the Vice President of the Native Association here. And I'm a co-chair of Julie of a special project that we have that I'd like to discuss with you because you mentioned some points. Uh, we've been working on a project called Tax Bill. Bill. And we have a protocol that identifies that the control of infrastructure uh, controls a region. And the limitation on infrastructure will limit a government's ability to grow. And so it's a direct, uh, and um, my own background is I am an infrastructure specialist from Harvard. So that's, that's uh, part of the work that I actually have been doing professionally for many years. 
in the last few six months, we've actually begun to put, we're beginning to focus now on the on the Silk Road and the ability of the Silk Road to kind of create almost a new uh, level of national recognition of the countries involved in that and the sort of economic, um, the, the sort of uh, the modern version of the Silk Road. This is really very much assisted by a number of situations, including the president of China actually being born in a city where the Silk Road begins in China. So from the Chinese end, we have a lot of a lot of support. And you mentioned the Silk Road. That was I'm so sorry. I was like, okay. but that was my interest in kind of coming and, and uh, speaking to you tonight, because we think that um, through um, we certainly offer our textbook platform uh, to you. And uh, and offer you an opportunity to um, to showcase your economic um, um, sort of your economic concepts and perceptions and involvements and contribution to the Silk Road. And um, from our perspective, you know, our project is really about it's really about um, social and cultural diplomacy and infrastructure diplomacy. Because infrastructure is really a mechanism that has been leveraged to control and to uh, to control and, uh, and to create issues in, um, in areas. And so um, our our protocol and our project is available to you. Uh, we have a website that is will be going up shortly. Um, and and um, we've spoken to the Indian government because the the uh, section going through as a uh, going through um, Afghanistan has actually been powered by the Indians going north, so they've actually contributed a a, um, a major power oh. from India using their uh, federal power agency. Um, so we think that it's not it's not a typical platform, but it's certainly a platform that can create a, or showcase positively. The, the contribution and the and create a focus um, that is unique today, although not unique to Marco Polo's time, but unique today, and uh, and we certainly would offer that to you. Thank you very much. First of all, thank you very much. Uh, well, to develop a little bit to deal with him to this whole idea of the let's say so called revival, it's another story, but for us, infrastructural development is uh, one of the most important priorities for the government. Uh, underline the importance, I can say, and as a minister, I envy to my colleague, which has the largest uh, budget in our government. <laughs> 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 it's for the infrastructure, the, the huge amount. We are now building the deep sea port. We have three ports in Georgia, we have three other nine in the seaport. Uh, to promote it, we are now working on the finalizing of Azerbaijan, Georgia, Turkey railway. This is railway that will connect to the Euro. Uh, we have already received some, some, uh, some goods from China with the concern of our custom, which was which just was exceptional. Five days faster than, than it would usually be taken. So we are we are definitely concentrating on that as a construction priority. And that brought us to the idea to discuss it at the China and Chinese Asian Development Bank and uh, the Chinese government uh, at the level of the uh, vice prime minister will be presented there. The whole country of the Silk Road will be there at the highest possible level. And now we'll be happy to go to. Send you invitation and I'm back in the Georgia to attend this. We have two day panel, we will have the in depth discussion. This is the first start of that, and, and we are really serious about that. Thank you very much. I find it very interesting that you also identified some elements in the country that. Alice has identified as part of infrastructure because infrastructure is not only 
bridges and railways and roads, but it's also what you're already doing in education, in uh, health care, and uh, the planning. Country planning, we, we have uh, if you start this project, uh, seems to spatial planning of the, of, the, of, the, of the country with, with all those involved. Yeah, right? yeah. I I also I remember reading at the um, a little while ago that uh, Georgia has made enormous progress in the whole anti-corruption. Um, you're still, still on. You're still working, but how were you able to do to make that kind of progress? Because it was singled out as very unusual that it was so. Um, so successful and so extensive. It was very difficult, it wasn't easy. Georgia probably was one of the most corrupt uh, republics in the Soviet Union. But uh, I think the, the success of it, which uh, still continues, and last year there were five more steps in the Transparency International ranking that we have improved, uh, is to probably is to it, it, it's complex. Uh, starting with the changes in the most corrupt uh, institutions and having the possibility for the youngsters to start work, uh, somehow increasing their salaries to, to decrease their interest in bribery, uh, showing the cases of the corrupt persons caught in uh, and in addition with that, uh, the, 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 the increasing the bureaucracy in the country. Uh, for example, in Georgia now there is no, uh, no single document you cannot get within 24 hours. Uh, the registration of business takes only 24 hours. When you register a new company, you apply to the document. And if you do not get an answer within 24 hours, you start to work. There is no space. And together with that, yes, of course, there's no space for production. But it's a, that's why I said it's a complex that it will take. We are now uh, one of the leaders of the uh, open governance. Uh, Partnership that was initiated by the Apostate the OGP conference this June. Um, now we are uh, everything uh, the Georgian Lottery we spent is on our website. This is transparent, it's clear. So, so it, it, that's what, how we do. I mean, uh, and, uh, and it was very successful, and uh, some of the architects of uh, that success are now in different. Sharing the experience. Yes. Yes. In, uh, Ukraine. in Ukraine, yes, not not single, but there are a lot in, in Albania, in Kyrgyzstan, in African states, uh, in Moldova. So, so we are, that's, that's a very good experience, which is complex, as I said, uh, with the easing the, the processes and diminishing the registration process. And Changing the, the well, it wasn't easy with the changing of the personality and magic, but there was no single uh, worker in the Georgian police who would have taken bribe. So, if you, and if you had to meet with 10 people, then it was 10 bribes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. yeah, so the mentality it should, should be. Uh, if I may add, yeah, one of the focal points was again creating the criminal image right. of corruption so of that the liability right. would lay both on the taker and the giver as well. Right. So it was very unpopular. It turned to be very unpopular in the, the daily lives of the citizens. But it's something that needs to continue with needs every day. Did um, Georgia have a lot of problems with oligarchs trying to control? Well, I don't know, fortunately or unfortunately, we didn't have much oligarchs, and especially involved in the uh, 
say in the, I mean, the, there were some monopolies uh, in, in pharmaceuticals, in some businesses, uh, but now with the new government has managed to, to open this case and to try to work again for monopolies. To give the specific, let's say, specific environment for the monopolies. Now it's, it used to be deregulated, and a lot of it has been was deregulated in something like the labor legislation or the labor inspection or, or etc. Et but now we are trying to, with the new power aspiration, which is European, uh, approximating to the European legislation and European standards, we are trying to regulate this more and bring in the new norms, which most business people. Any other questions? You don't have a counterpart at all, or a, a mouthpiece for Russian, maybe not integration, but communication specifically. For communicating with the Russian with side? Now, uh, there is a single position of a special representative to the relations with the Russian Federation or right. Prime Minister of Georgia. Uh, he's an ambassador, former ambassador to EU, former ambassador to Russia, very prominent. I want to hand the bilateral talks with the foreign deputy foreign minister Karasinets. That's the only. Well, yes, of course, we have a Geneva talks, which is uh, after the, the 2008 war, we have uh, initial this forum, which is important because it's the only place where Georgia and Russia can talk uh, with the participation of the OEC, European Union, and the United States. Uh, of course, I mean, left alone. With <laughs> but is this a is this an ambassadorship or a, a ministry of the on zone? Uh, is there much of an office, or it's just one person? No, that's just one right. person. Maybe uh, two, assistant. three gotcha. assistants. At, at the moment, you have no diplomatic relations with Russia, do you? No, no. So you couldn't have you a ministry. Yeah. You can't really have an ambassador. Yeah. But just thinking in all the different cultural ways that you're connecting with Europe. Euro-Atlantic area. Uh, there are just as many ways to maybe not fight Russia, but communicate unofficially. I'm sure you're, you're utilizing those kinds of things. It's just an interesting thought. NATO doesn't do that very well either, but that's not strictly speaking our mandate. Just interesting. I just found it hard to communicate with Dmitry Rogozin when he was talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there are no more uh, formal questions, it's our custom to um, to end the formal discussion and then to have a little reception with some wine and cheese and people keep on chatting informally. And so I'd like to uh, end the formal um, Thank you situation. Much. And I just want to something. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.